Hello and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic and today's puzzle um, which is on screen and in fact I've just noticed before we get onto this it seems to have has this got Cracking the Cryptic's initials in it? CT? Oh, I could definitely read that as a T if I needed to. Well, anyway, this is by Slow Larry, which is an intriguing name. Um, and in fact, the pseudonym Slow Larry, um, or the person who goes under the pseudonym Slow Larry, uses a different pseudonym on our Discord server, and the, the pseudonym there is Rhea Kosher. So I don't know what either of these pseudonyms mean. But anyway, this is the puzzle we're doing today. It comes very highly recommended. And um, I'm delighted to tell you that the recommenders in point are not Mark. So Mr. Goodliff has not been involved in the selection of this puzzle at all, which means that it might be doable. Um, so we can look forward, hopefully, to a smooth and pleasant solve rather than me sitting staring at the screen for half an hour not knowing what to do. Um, fingers crossed. Anyway, um, now before we get on to this and I read you the rules, let me mention a couple of things first. This coming weekend it is the Indian Sudoku Championship um, and I think the weekend after that is the Indian Puzzle Championship. So do have a go. Um, because it's entirely online this year for obvious reasons, the whole world is eligible to participate. Um, you just have to register. It's completely free to do so they'll put a link under the video go there and have a look um, the only thing to mention is if you are from India and you want to be eligible to win the prizes or the title then you have a slightly shorter window I think to do uh, to, to take uh, to take the exam in so um, yeah just just read the instructions carefully but do have a go the quality of the Indian Sudoku scene is absolutely exceptional. So you know that there's just going to be a whole series of brilliant puzzles to do. And for that reason alone, it's probably worth your time. Um, now, uh, in, in terms of our own Sudoku puzzle hunt, which we keep talking about because you keep writing to us about it and telling us how much you're enjoying it. This is available to everyone who's a patron of the channel over on Patreon. Um, which costs $2 a month um, and I believe represents just about the best value uh, for money that you can possibly find in terms of things you could spend your entertainment allowance on. Um, so we've got some new names who've completed Tracking the Cryptid in the last 24 hours. I'm going to read them to you because they deserve it. Uh, Aaron Hume, Kevin Fromelt, Elijah Adams, Callum Mailer and Paul Smith. Well done to all of you. You correctly solved all of the hunt and you gave me the correct answer at the end so congratulations very impressive and for those of you still working on it keep going if I get more entries I will read your name out um, now let's get on to the rules of slow Larry's puzzle that name ring makes me laugh every time I think about it but what we've got is normal Sudoku rules apply in cages digits must sum to the small clue in the top left corner of the cage digits cannot repeat within a cage and here it gets interesting. A friendly cell has a value identical to its row, column or box number counted in the standard way. I'll come on to that in a second. Uh, green cells are friendly. So there are some obviously some green cells in the grid here. Um, now we've got some examples. Row 1, column 8. That's that one. So this could be a 1 because it's in the first row presumably it could be an eight because it's in the eighth column and it could be a three uh, because it's in box three of the sudoku so boxes would be one two three four five six seven eight nine um, now we've got another example row nine column two so this one so this cell could be a nine because it's in the ninth row. It could be a two because it's in the second column or it could be a seven because it's in the seventh box. So each one of these green cells has that property. Um, I've never seen this rule set before, uh, so it should be quite interesting. Do have a go. The way to play, of course, is to click the link under the video as usual. Now I get to play. Let's get cracking. And my temptation at the start, I have to say, is going to be to label the options for these green cells so let's put them oh, I know how I can, I can do this I can go ones in those I'm using um, the new software today and I'm using a large digits version so you can see the central pencil marks actually are a little bit bigger than usual and that's because in yesterday's video I was struggling to see the pencil marks against the colors in the background so these are some of the options that we hopefully will be able to release to the to everybody in the coming 
weeks. Um, now, so that's the row option. So in column one, those two must have the option of one. These in column two will have the option of two. Option of three in column three. Whoops, I did not know what I even put in there. So let's undo that. Four in that column, five here, six in those two, seven in these two, eight in those two, and nine in those two. Now let's do the boxes. So in this box, everything should have two as an option. That one doesn't. In this one, everything, everything should have three, and that one doesn't. Four needs to go in there. This is an unfriendly box, look. There's absolutely no greens in that one, so we'll leave that one well alone. This one needs a six in that one, seven in that one, eight in that one, and another unfriendly box. So the most unfriendly boxes, don't visit boxes one, five, and nine on your holidays. You won't get a good welcome. Um, so what does this all mean? We've got... Let me just stare at this for a second. I'm sure it means something um, because Mark wasn't involved in this one. So it ought to be doable. I'm not actually seeing anything from these pencil marks. Though. So maybe we have to use the killer cages. So let's have a look at those. We've got a 30 killer cage in five cells. Now that is, no, that's almost useful. I was about to say it has to have a nine in it, but it doesn't have to have a nine in it because annoyingly eight, seven, six, five, and four add up to 30. So we don't know, we know diddly squat about this cage. I'm afraid that is not useful. 18, the T of cracking the cryptic. Um, well, that definitely needs a one. That definitely needs a one because you can't get, if you went two, three, four, five, and six, um, that would two, three, four, five, and six adds up to twenty. So it needs a two as well, doesn't it? Okay. And the way the way to some to shortcut what digits a cage sometimes needs. The trick I often use if I'm not immediately getting it from my sort of stored memory, my ROM. I have to use my RAM instead, and I add one to the cage number. So this has got five cells in it. So imagine you had a six cell cage. And then you basically need the triangular number that's the equivalent of six. So one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six, I know is 21. And if I lop a two out of that, I get the minimum total I could make for five cells without the two. So 21 minus two is 19. So I immediately know that an 18 cage must have a two in it, which is all a very long winded way of explaining something that you can do quite quickly in your head if you get used to it. And similarly, I therefore know that there is they could be miss a three missing from this cage because um, obviously if I take 21, deduct three from it, I get 18. So one, two, four, five, and six is enough to get me there. So we just know that there is a one and a two in this cage. Ah, ah, but something simpler, there is no nine in the cage. So we can pencil mark nines into the corners of box five. And we know there's no nine because if you if we did put a nine in this cage, the other four cells would have to add up to nine, but using different digits, the minimum you can make four cells add up to is one, two, three, and four, which is 10. So there is definitely a nine in here, or one of those cells. And 31 is better because 31 does need a nine in it. Which, so if there was a nine here, then there would be a nine here. Then we could get rid of a nine from there. That's not, ah, no, maybe actually look, if there was a nine here, we would actually know the value of this one. That would be a six. Ah. Ah, hang on, I've just noticed some, let's, let's, let's ignore the nines. We'll ignore the nines. I've noticed something else. These four cells are suspicious because they, if you look at the options for these four cells, it's three, six, seven, and nine. But it's, it's, it's like a bent quadruple in the sense that each of these digits has to be a different number. 
So we can see that if we go through them, if you imagine this was, if we looked at the finished solution and that was a nine, what would happen? Well, this would be three, seven, and six. So each, look, each of them are different. Now, if we go the other way and pick the other option for this square, what happens? Well, then you go around the other side and the other, they take their other value and you get three, six, seven, and nine again. They're all different, but they're all, they're all the opposite of what they were when we started from the nine here. So these, that feels like it's important. Well, well, yeah, okay. I mean, it doesn't necessarily matter, but that means that one of those squares has to be a three. That's really interesting. That is really interesting. So because we know this digit is either three or seven and in each iteration it takes one of the values and the same is true of this, the same is true as this, the same is true of this. We know, so we also know there's a six in one of these two squares. That's weird. There's a nine in, oh, I can't pencil mark it, but there's a nine in one of those squares because either this is a nine or when this is a six, it goes seven, three, and this is a nine. So you always have to, it's always put in the two binary states of existence in the puzzle before you know the solution of the puzzle, you know that one of these squares must be a nine. One of these squares must be a seven. So we can eliminate sevens from here. We can eliminate nines from here. We can eliminate threes from here. So three must be in one of those cells because it can't be in any of those. And we can eliminate sixes. Ah, so six is up here. The fact that one of these is a six means that's not a six. In fact, one of these is a three means that's not a three. Um, well, at least we made that is really that's just a weird pattern. That's fascinating, um, but I'm, I'm not actually sure how to. If that was a nine, it would have serious. At least it would push a nine down here. I would eliminate a nine from there. No, 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 no. Hang on, hang on. We've got the same thing there. Ah, this is this is clearly what's going on in this puzzle. Look, these squares have the same property. So this square, before we know the finished solution, this has to be a one or a four. If it's a one, you go seven, three, four. If it's a four, you go each digit has to switch round. So this would be three, seven, one. So it's always a one, three, four, seven quadruple. But the four can be in one of two positions. So the four is in one of those. The seven is in one of these. Oh, the four therefore comes out of that one. The seven comes out of this one. There must be a three in one of those two cells. No three up there. There must be a one in one of these two squares. No one up there. I'm not sure how to use these things vertically, but horizontally, there must be a four in one of these. It's sort of got a symmetrical thing going on. Seven, there must be a seven in one of these. This is very clever. It's very unusual as well. So can we do this again? Yeah, yes, we can. This foursome is the same. This this is the even digits, two, four, six, and eight, working exactly the same way. If this is two, that becomes six, eight, four. If this is four, it goes eight, six, two. So the two is in one of those squares and therefore locked into one of three positions in box three. The eight must be in one of these positions and therefore locked into one of three positions in box seven. The four must be in one of those cells. That square can't be an eight anymore. The six must be in one of these cells. So six was there as well. So six is getting a bit more restricted in the central box. 
two is in, oh, two is not here. Actually, that's interesting as well. That's very interesting. Each one of these pairs that we've got has eliminated one digit from... Ah. Ah. Now that... That is an interesting pattern, isn't it? One, two, five, eight, and... Have we got the same... Look, let's change the colour of these. Let's make them... Ooh, I don't like that colour. Let's make them... Oh, goodness me, I don't really like that one either. Hang on, let me find a better colour. That's horrible. It's sort of a sludge colour. Um, how do I make these? No, I can't really see that one. No, I don't like that. Sorry about it. Hang on, I will find a colour I like. I definitely don't like that one. That one. We'll use dark green. Oh, I'm, I'm really sorry if that's going to offend colourblind people. Um... Do I have to use sludge? Is that what I have to do? Yeah, okay, I'm going to use sludge. Hopefully brown. The brown sludge colour is more distinct from the light green than the dark green will be from the light green. But let's get on to actually Sudoku rather than colours because... Look, these six cells, the sludge cells, only have the options of 1, 2, 5, 8, 9. And if I go 1 here... I go 8, 5, 2, 9, 5. So they're perfect. Again, if this goes 5, it, it just unwinds the other way around and you take the other digit from each cell. So if this is 5, you go 9, 2, 5, 8, 1. So again, the two... In the, in, the, in the two versions of the solution that could exist at this point, because we don't know what the correct one is, we know that each cell, this is either a 1 or a 5, this is either a 1 or an 8, but one of them is a 1. So there's definitely a 1 in one of these two squares. There's definitely an 8 in one of these two squares. There's definitely a 5 in one, one of... Ah, 5. Yeah, oh, this is gorgeous. Oh, this is gorgeous, look. In these two squares, there's a 5. In these two squares, there's a 5. I don't know which way round they go, but one of them has to be a 5. If you don't believe me, try it. If you try and... This, this is either a 5 or it's a 2. Now, if it's, if it's a 2, you go 9, 5, 1, 8, 5. So you can see there's definitely a 5 in one of those. There's definitely a 5 in one of those. The common digit in any row or column has to appear in one of the two cells. It's it's like the strangest X-wing. So there has to be a two in one of these. But anyway, coming back to fives, that means there's no possibility you can ever put a five in, in the T-shape, which means the five must not be in the T-shape. Now that must... I'm just going to check the others, actually, just to check whether anything else, because 9 now can't go in any of those. 2 can't go in any of those. 1 can't go in any of those. 8 can't go in any of... The, oh, 8? Nah, not quite. But you can see the 8's in one of those two squares, and the 8's in one of these two squares do have quite a profound effect on box 9. No, I, I think it must be this cross, because eliminating a 5 from this, so does that... Ah, well one thing we can say is that the 18 definitely needs a 3 now, because the only way of getting to 18 with a 1 and a 2 and no 3 was with 4, 5 and 6. Now the 5 we know is not available for that option, so there is a 3 in here. So we've, so far we've got 1, 2 and 3, which is 6. We need another 12. So it can't be 3, 9. It can't be 5, 7. So it's got... Ah! Oh, I should have just known that then. Sorry. I did not know that. A 5-cell 18 cage without a 5 in it has to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, apparently. Sorry, I did not know that. That is poor knowledge on my part. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 8 by force. And there's definitely... Oh no, there's not a 4 in there. There's 4 could go here as well. Si ah, where does 6 go? 
Where does 6 go in the central box? We've got 6 is in one of those two squares and 6 is in one of these two squares. So 6 has to go in one position. Let's get rid of the pencil marks from those. These have got to be 5, 7 and 9 to complete the box. 6 is not here anymore. Uh, sorry, I'm sure there's more we can do now. I just have to figure out what it is. So one of the ah one of these two is a four, so there's no four here. One of those two is a four, there's no four here. Um oh, okay, so that's we've we've run out of track with that, I think. If we what else have we learnt then? We've got Ooh, Sudoku, we've got, yeah, okay, row row six of the grid, those four squares have got to be the digits five, six, seven, and nine, so they are a quadruple on five, six, seven, and nine, which, well, one thing it does is it eliminates nine from those two cells, and that means, that means there is a nine down here. And that means that sludge, the sludge cell here can't be nine anymore. And that is going to unwind the whole of the sludge because let me just double check this five, six, seven, nine. Yeah, there must be a nine in the 31. That forces the nine, this is gorgeous. There has to be a nine in the bottom of the C. Therefore, there is no nine here. This becomes a two, this becomes five, this becomes an eight. One, five, nine. And that is how we fill the sludge. And now, now what do we do? We've now, uh, now eight is not in those cells. So eight's moved into column five, look, in the central box, which is not useful. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure something we can do here. Five, six, seven, and nine. So ah, so the thirty one cage now. The thirty one cage can't have a seven in it. Because there's a seven in one of those two cells and there's a seven in the quadruple. So you can't put a seven in the thirty one cage, so it probably needs an eight. Let's think. So, if there's no 8 in a 31 cage, it would be, and no 7, you'd go 9, 6, 5, which is 20, and you've got two more cells. No, you can't do it. You can't get to 31. So, there's definitely a 9 and an 8 in it. And then you need 14 more without a 7. So, ah, oh, this is like the 8. Ah, oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. I. I some of these cages are forced as soon as there's no seven apparently in a five cell 31 cage it has to be nine eight six five three which i didn't know but it is true so there we go we learn something new every day uh whoops i don't know what i've done there i'm just going to delete all that nine six nine eight six five and i need a three as well in fact i actually want central pencil mark so let's do it this way there we go but the, these ones can't be, well, those ones, can, in fact, where does five now go in here? This five sees almost all of the box. So five goes there, but here we can't put six or nine into this pair. So this, this becomes a three, eight pair. We can get rid of six and nine. This is a three, eight pair that fixes that this is a four that that unwinds this foursome. What a ridiculous puzzle. That three bounces back in there, gives me those two. These two squares, therefore, um, have got to be six and nine, I think, to complete the 31 cage. This eight forces the eight up the top of the 18 cage. Let's get rid of the pencil markings. That one can't be a three either. This square is a naked single because it, if we look at the row, we've got um, 
we've got the quadruple plus three eight. So this has to be one, two, or four, and there's a one, four in the box. So this is two. This is a one. Ah, this is a one or a four, and it can't be a one because of the sludge. So that's a four. This is a one. We get a two, three, four, triple in the middle. Let's so remove the fours from this, these cells. Good grief. And all of a sudden, the puzzle, it feels more tractable all of a sudden, doesn't it? So these squares here have got to be five, seven, no, six, seven, and nine. So we could probably put that in and do some tidying up. So seven comes out there, six comes out here. Six, nine pair here gives us the seven. So this becomes a six nine pair. So we now actually look at that. We've got a one seven pair at the end of this row. These squares have got to be two, three, and five. No, that's wrong. That's wrong. I was reading this as a six nine pair there. That's not a six nine pair because this is a, ah, but it might become a six nine pair because the seven impacts this one. So that's a six, that's a nine, that's a three, that's a seven, that bounces back in there, gives us a seven and a one. This is two, three, five, that's not three. This is the 30 cage, so we've now got, well, you can't, you can't put two and three in there because that would add up to five and mean those three squares had to add to 25, which is impossible. So one of these is a five, which means that's definitely not a five. That's a two. That fixes this. That's got to be a nine, look, which we could have got the moment we we got this nine. But now this, this cage must be forced. Yeah, look, I've got 15. I need 15 more. 15 in this domino without using a seven is a six and a nine, and the six is there, which tells us the order. Nine's got to be in one of those two squares. This six fixes the other one. Yep, that does, look, that's now a two. And the, all of these Schrodinger rectangles where we weren't sure what the state of existence was, but we knew it was a binary. It was either, you know, each cell had to have one of two characteristics. We now understand exactly how they are all filled. We have opened, we've opened the box and we have discovered whether the cat was alive or dead. Um, now, we've got five, seven there, which we can't resolve. Hmm, I don't know how to finish that bit off. But effectively now, what am I left with to solve this puzzle? That six is fixing the six and the nine. That nine is fixing the nine here. Six has got to be exactly in the corner. Nobody put six in the corner except me. And one has to go here in this box. Eight has to go here. Four must have to go here. Four goes in one of those two. In fact, let's look at these three squares at the top where you can see we need one, four, and eight. Not sure if we know the order yet. Let's just put it in and we can tidy it up in a moment. Actually, that square is very restricted. What can this be? Mark would actually be proud of me. One, two, three, four, five, six. It can be seven. I think it is seven because it sees eight and nine as well. That is a naked single. That means those two squares have to include a seven. So maybe this row now. We need one, three, five and eight yep that's a three another naked single one five eight into the balance that's a five by Sudoku. this has got to be one or eight you can see the one here in the sludge fixes the order eight must be here by sudoku these squares have got to be two four and five the five must go downwards that fixes the five and the three, the two and the four get fixed. Two goes here. This square's got to be something. Seven. Yeah, I think it's seven. That fixes a seven there. 
Still don't know quite what the arrangement of sevens is in the finished grid. These are a one, three pair. We can do that. One and three go in. These two squares are four and five, which we can do. Yep, we can. Four and five go in. These two squares are three and five. Uh, we can't do three and five. And these two squares are one, two and four, which we... No, we can't do, actually. At least I don't think we can. Oh, the three here, though, might be helpful because that gives us a two, four pair, which means that square ought to be something useful. That's got to be a six. Yeah, that is a six. Uh, hopefully, I think we are just tidying up. I think we've we've cracked the bones of this and we just need to tidy up the remainder. So we've got nines into one of these squares. We still need to put eight in this box. Eight's got to go in one of those two positions. So each one of these four squares has exactly one option. So maybe column one. That's got it's column one or column three, I think, that's going to finish this off. Three, six, and nine. Yeah, there you go. That's a nine. Now, once that's a nine, that's going to fix all of this box together. That all goes in. That fixes the eight and the four. This nine fixes the nine. Whoopsie. The nine and the six. This box needs two, three, and six, which we can do. And hopefully now we're on the home straight. Seven and five go in there. Five and three go in here. That fixes the middle box. What a gorgeous puzzle. That's, I think, the solution. Let's click check. Yes. Wow, Slow Larry. That is a heck of a debut. I, you know, it's one of the things that I think is really impressive about this is that the logic is pretty original. I don't remember ever seeing these you know, these sort of rectangles being set up and working so beautifully together. And the way they then led on to this six cell arrangement, which gave or locked a five out of the 18 cage, you can see exactly how the puzzle has been intended to be solved. And imagine just trying to craft that, you know, you're given a completely blank canvas and someone says now, this is the idea I want you to build into the puzzle. To do it this elegantly is it's sensational setting. It really is beautiful. I loved it. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it too. Please let me know in the comments. I do read them all and I enjoy them all as well. And I know the constructors um, really appreciate the feedback too. So thanks for watching. Back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.